Powell, who was Sean Powell growing up? Well, I mean, uh, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Um, I went to Howard University, which is now the alma mater of our next vice president of the United States. So I'm proud to say. Uh, and when I was at Howard, I, you know, I went to school. I had really no idea what I really wanted to do. Um, it's just one day I was just walking across the campus and I saw the campus newspaper and I picked it up and looked at it, put it down. Then I ran back over, picked it up again, and I read it. And then I changed my major the next day uh, oh, from wow. business to journalism. It, it just hits you that quick. And, um, you know, I've been very fortunate uh, to be able to be around some uh, very good people in the business who've helped me, uh, groomed me. Uh, uh, you know, they allowed me to make my mistakes early on. I started out working in St. Louis, then I went to Dallas and Miami, New York, uh, working for newspapers and all those places. And now I'm with, uh, with Turner, which does, uh, NBA TV, okay. NBA.com and also inside the NBA, which you probably see with Charles Barkley, Shaq yes, and Kenny and all those guys. So we're all under the same umbrella, same family. And my responsibilities are the MBA. Now, before this, obviously, when I was working for newspapers and other places, you know, I would do all sports, football, baseball, basketball, Olympics, tennis, golf, you name it. It's allowed me to, this job has allowed me to travel the world. I've been to uh, South Africa. I've been to Australia, been to uh, France, uh, Italy, wow. London, you know, you name it, Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Brooklyn within itself, being the largest borough is, is a melting pot. So <laughs> Exactly. So like I said, I mean, it's, um, I've been blessed, obviously. And I never forget that. Um, I, I like to think that I approach each day just as important as my first day. Uh, I think that that's a good uh, mindset to have, no matter what you do in life. First of all, you have to really enjoy what you do. Uh, because if you don't enjoy what you do, you know, maybe you don't put as much effort into it, or maybe it doesn't get the, you know, you don't give it your best. You don't really look to evolve. You don't really look to aspire if you're doing something that you just really don't like to do. So if I have, you know, any advice that I could give any young person is, Find out what your passion is first. Don't worry about the money. Don't worry about job. Don't worry about anything. Find out where your passion is first. And hopefully your passion is aligned with your talent. And if it's not, work hard at your talent so you can be the best that you can possibly be. If, you're, if your passion and your, and your talent are aligned, you will never ever have a bad day at work. You will, it will never even seem like work. You will it'll be sort of like you're living a fantasy. And I would have to say, for the most part, that's how I've felt. I felt that I've been living this blessed life professionally that's allowed me to get the most of my abilities. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Um, uh, as you were speaking, I was thinking of a young lady um, that I interviewed. She's, uh, she's out in uh, uh, Gambia and she's an aspiring college basketball player. She wants to, you know, get into college here. And I was like, you know, what, do you, what else do you want to do besides basketball? She said she wants to be a sports journalist. So uh, Fanta, if you're watching, I uh, want to give a shout out to you, Fanta Mente. Um, but yes, uh, kids finding, you know, what they're passionate about, that's very uh, Im important. Um, so now, as far as... Um, you know, growing up in, in Pittsburgh, were you an athlete? Were you, was there like a certain sport that you were really into or were you into like a bunch of different sports and, and hobbies? I really wasn't into sports any more, any less than any other kid growing up. You know, you go out, you play football, you play basketball, whatever your friends want to do, that's what you do. Um, I mean, track and field, I, you know, I used to run a lot, but I, I mean, I wasn't really like, you know, blessed genetically. I wasn't seven foot tall, you know, I wasn't built with muscle, you know, none of that, you know, I'm the ordinary looking guy, you know, uh, like to play golf very poorly, I might add. So, uh, <laughs> no, I, I think it was more or less with me. I think I had um, a natural curiosity about the world. And I wanted to read up about the world as much as I could, because back then, you know, you're trapped in your own house, your own neighborhood, you don't go anywhere. 
So I would read encyclopedias. Uh, I, I know that's a strange concept now with people on the internet. <laughs> all the time. What's an encyclopedia? What is that? But, uh, you know, you go to the library and you read about places and things. And I was always fascinated about Paris. I was always fascinated about, you know, clothes, about anything that I didn't really have or wasn't exposed to. I was always fascinated about that. So I read a lot and, you know, I did have a love for sports and then I did have a love for reading. And if you read a lot, then you learn how to write because you're reading other people's written work. And so that rubs off on you. And to me, it really opened the door for writing is by reading a lot. And so I would understand different styles, di different ways to use the language and things like that. So I can develop my own style, my own voice is how they say it in, in our business. And so basically those two worlds converged. My love for sports and my love for reading and writing came together you know, and help me get to where I am today. Beautiful. Um, you know, now, you know, as, as you, you know, de develop, you know, your years of experience, is there a certain uh, a specific athlete that stands out as far as like, wow, he has a very interesting story or interesting personality? Because I know you did a piece on Pistol Pete. Maravich, uh, but besides him, I know his story, Best in Peace, was you know quite unique. But is there any other athlete that stands out over the course of your career? Well, growing up, um, I um, was a big fan of Roberto Clemente, uh, who died, obviously, a member of Pittsburgh Pirates. I grew up in Pittsburgh, so that was my hometown team. And um, but when I became, when I got into the business, became an adult, and everything, uh, I remember uh, my my editor said, "Hey." the Los Angeles Lakers are in town. Go get, go out and get us a story and Mac, go talk to Magic Johnson. You know, oh. at this point, I was kind of intimidated because, you know, you grow up, you see Magic playing on TV and everything. And, oh my God, I got to go talk to him. And so I'm really nervous and I walk up to him. My hands are shaking and everything. I, I'm calling him Mr. Johnson. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Johnson, can I ask you a question? And, you know, Magic is such a charming, disarming, per he's a man of the people. And he made me feel at ease. And I never forgot that, uh, how it could have been, he very easily could have just brushed me aside as be being this, you know, uh, raw, new uh, reporter who's kind of nervous and everything, but he allowed me to do my job. And since then, he and I have gotten close. I know him very well. You know, nice. Over the years, he sees me. He's always giving me a big hug and everything. He probably doesn't even remember that first meeting or anything. But just certain things in this business or in any line of work, you never forget those crucial key moments along the way that really help you. And the thing about that is the people who you come across who help you, they don't know how much they help you. You know, only you know, but you never forget. Anyway, Magic obviously was fantastic. Charles Barkley, we're now sort of co-workers, but you know, back then he was fantastic dealing with him, always entertaining, Shaq, Michael Jordan. I mean, even the athletes today, Kevin Durant was, you know, he's, you know, he's so approachable. It, you know, the one thing about this business is you find out very quickly um, as much as you can about you know certain athletes and people who you deal with and a lot of them are very professional and very nice i mean you know i i, I don't run into that many unpleasant people now it could be that they're not going to be unpleasant towards me because i can turn around and you know reveal them to the world but uh i do have sort of like a meter going out in my head and just to really find out who's genuine I have, a, I have a, a certain rule that I kind of judge character by. Um, and it's really, it, it comes to this. How do you treat the people who are not important in your life? If you treat them with respect, that reflects well on you. If you brush them aside, you don't want anything to do with them, then that doesn't reflect well on you. So I've come across a lot of athletes who have treated people who don't mean anything to them, you know, who can't really help their lives. I've seen them treat them with respect, like the cooks, 
like you know the people on the street, uh, you know, ordinary in ordinary situations like that, and those people come away with such memories. Okay, from that brief interaction with someone who they grew up watching and idolizing and things like that. So um, anyway, that's my long-winded way of saying, you know, Magic, Michael Jordan, Charles Barkley, Shaq, uh, Kevin Durant. Those are the athletes who um, I think that uh, who've kind of helped me along to get to where I am right now. Excellent, and even uh, you know your your last couple uh, your last couple sentences. You know what you said uh, really resonates with this youth podcast. I started it um, this past year, this summer, uh, when the lockdown you know first started, and my first uh, the first thing I want to do was I wanted to kind of set up a platform where young people in Detroit could kind of see people of color. You know that's you know. Uh, that's whether in the industry or in the professional realm, hear from their stories. And I reached out to a lot of uh, guys that's originally from Detroit, like Steve Smith, Derek Coleman, Tommy Hitman Hearns, and I didn't get any responses. And some of them, they would read the invite, but wouldn't respond back. And I was kind of losing hope. And then I reached out to Craig Hodges, a guy that's not from Detroit or Michigan. He's from Chicago Heights, you know. And once he came on the show, Mr. Powell, that opened up my viewer base and he really kickstarted um, my, my podcast. So as you know, as you were speaking, you know, I was like, you know, in my head, I was like, yeah, I got that same feel from Craig Hodges, you know, a guy that, you know, the media kind of vilified in some ways, you know, but he's very down to earth. He was very approachable and really did a good job of sharing his story. So, yes, mm -hmm. I can definitely relate. Now, um, as far as, you know, barriers for, you know, for our young people, did you ever experience any barriers like moving up the ladder, um, you know, in, in your profession? Because, you know, over the years, we've seen like a Rob Parker make it. We've seen a, a Stephen A. Smith move up, uh, move up the ranks. But, you know, we still don't really see that many people of color, at least on TV. How was that experience for you moving up the ladder? Well, I like to think that um, I think I received every promotion when I deserved it. And I wasn't pushed along too fast, nor did I think I was held back for, you know, any reason whatsoever. I like to think I paid my dues. And, um, and when the opportunity presented, presented itself, um, for the most part, you know, I was rewarded. Now, look, I mean, you can go through anybody's career where, you know, they missed out on this job, that job, or this opportunity. It happens to everybody, you know, you know, me, I'm, I'm the same way, uh, but I certainly have no complaints. Um, the other thing about our business is, um, which I, I think it's a little disturbing to me, is that how television magnifies the person. In other words, you have some some outstanding writers, newspapers, magazines, whatever, and they will go under the radar because they don't appear on TV. Meanwhile, you'll see somebody on TV and the audience will think that person is a genius and knows what he's talking about and everything. No, not really. Not really. They just happen to be on TV and it happens to, again, it just magnifies them. So, um, you know, I've done, I've done some TV, I still do do some TV, but the bulk of my work is uh, written, you know, and I'd like to think, and having, for someone who's done both TV and print, and print is much harder, you know, you have to do a lot of reporting, you have to know the language, you have to dig, you have to do your story. But I'd like to think that a lot of the TV gets your, their ideas from reading people's stories, you know, mm -hmm. rather than really coming up with their own. But uh, I think my career has gone on along uh, about as well as I could expect it far beyond my dreams. I mean, I really had no idea where I was going. And I think there might have been one or two times early on in my career where I just thought I would probably do something else in another line of work. But here I am, what, over three decades later, I've never worked <laughs> outside this business. And I feel very blessed for that. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, what advice would you have, um, you know, for our youth, 
especially youth in the inner city that, you know, they're kind of on the fence about furthering their education beyond high school? Well, I cannot stress strongly enough that um, education is the key. And I understand it. Some of us are not born with the, some of the certain advantages that others have. Uh, some of us, our surroundings might not be as advantageous for, for uh, growth as others might have. Uh, but I'd like to think that nobody is really deprived because it really just takes a lot of hard work and finding that one person in your life, that one adult in your life who is looking out for your best interests and who wants to push you ahead. Uh, sometimes you got to pull yourself away from some of the neighborhood influences, even some influences in your own family that may not be positive. Um, and then look for the right way. Look for the, and, and, the, and education is always the right way. Go to school, work hard at school, you know, work hard at being the best in class. And whatever path you want to choose, you have to really focus, okay, focus on that path and make sure you're really getting the best education you can and you're exposed to so much. And a, a lot of it really is uh, the, in, the influences in your life, your parents, uh, an uncle, grandmother, whoever the adult is in your life. You've got to be lucky enough and fortunate enough to find that one adult who's going to steer you down to the path of success. Uh, I really think that for those who, who um, you know, or in tough neighborhoods and things like that. That's the biggest challenge. It's not that you lack intelligence, okay? It's, it's, it's not that, you know, other people might have certain advantages. The only thing is you just have to have those adults in your life. And, and I think that's where it starts. Once you find those, that person in your life, be it a teacher, a parent, a uncle, whoever it might be that can steer you down the right path, I think you're good to go. Thank you, Mr. Powell, um, you know, for these words of wisdom for our, for our youth. Um, we're down to three last questions. Um, now, uh, seeing a, a photo of you and uh, President o Obama, um, how is that like uh, being around uh, Mr. Barack Obama? Well, first of all, um, I cannot explain to you how special that moment was. First of all, you he walks up to you and he looks you in the eye. Right away, you can see that this is someone that you're gonna respect. But the one thing I take away from that more than anything was the handshake. It wasn't one of these weak handshakes. Flimsy. Slap <laughs> on the wrist. It was a handshake. You know what I'm saying? Look at you, looked you in the eye, shook your, your hand and asked how you were doing. It was genuine. And can you imagine how many hands he sh shaked over the years and how many people he met? But he made you feel like you were the most important person to him at that moment. And that's what I took away most of all from that interaction. Because, you know, I've met lots of people, famous people, you know, athletes and whatever. But some of them, you know, you kind of, ah, they're like, ah, yeah, whatever. <laughs> but that interaction to me, I'll take away how genuine it was, how, um, how he took a special interest in you in that three to four minutes. And you, and, and you go away from that feeling just special yourself. So I always said if I were able to, you know, if I were to ever, you know, become whatever, that I would always treat people uh, the right way. It doesn't matter what you do for a living. It doesn't matter what your education level, how much money you make. I don't care about any of that. I mean, I'm a character person. You come to me with respect and respect will be returned. Matter of fact, twice as much respect will be returned. And that's the other yeah. thing. For, for young people, the character, the personality, you know, learn how to greet people, learn how to look people in the eye, take a special interest in them, okay? Uh, learn how to express yourself in a very positive uh, uh, manner, 
leave an impression with people. They need to walk away from you saying, wow, that guy or that lady is, is great. You need to leave a positive impression. So that would be my advice to anybody. Make everybody remember who you are, okay? And then you're gonna run into one person who's gonna take a special interest in you because of the way you presented yourself and now you're off and running. Excellent, you know, excellent advice. Um, you know, and one thing, I re another thing I like about my youth podcast is, you know, as our guests are sharing words of wisdom to the youth, I'm also taking some of these words of wisdom as well. So, and, and you know what? And, and here's the thing. Here's the other thing. Uh, there are a lot of people who have helped me, and you know what they told me? I said, No, no, you don't have to pay me back. I said, Pay it forward. Pay it forward. In other words. What I'm doing for you, you turn around and do for someone else who is, who, who's in the position you are when I helped you. So I also think that that's very important. Pay it forward. Um, and uh, if we had more people who did that, we wouldn't have a lot of the problems we have today in society. Uh, that, that is a fact, uh, fact actually. Um, and hey, Mr. Powell, so if if they came out with a Sean Powell story, which actor would play you and why? Huh. Oh, man. Put you on the spot. I know. Uh, I've been told I look like Dwight Gooden, but of course, he's not an actor or anything like that. Hey, look, I, you know, it could be Will Smith. I, hey, by the way, speaking of actor, I have a Denzel Washington story. I was at the Lakers game. And, you know, Denzel Washington sits at courtside and the media seats are you know, not that far away, whatever. And at halftime, I'm saying, uh oh, Denzel Washington getting up from the seat. He's coming over to us. Oh, my God. He came over and he's sitting down talking basketball and everything at like, you know, nothing. And I'm like, <laughs> you're kidding me, right? <laughs> you're kidding me. <laughs> down to earth just curious about, he knew the game. He's just curious about LeBron James and things Does like that. Does he sound like he's in a character when he talks? No, Does he no, have no, that? No. Okay. <laughs> totally ordinary guy, like, you know, just a fan. And he got up and walked away and he, you know, and I was like, that's just amazing. Here's a guy, Oscar winning actor, famous, all that stuff. But again, he comes across as so genuine, you know? So because of that interaction, Put down Denzel, okay. <laughs> Little pencil in <laughs> um, Mr. Powell, I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to come on Heavy Brand Podcast. Um, it's live stream on Facebook at Heavy Brand Podcast. Um, thank you uh, so much. And in my native tongue, Midasipan, which means thank you very much in the tree, uh, tree language. Thank you so much, Mr. Powell. Hey, the pleasure was all mine. I actually am honored that you asked me to be on your podcast. And I say to everybody out there, best of luck. Don't let anything stop you. Anything or anyone get in your way of success. Man. You know, if you Man. work hard, you will get what's coming to you. Amen. Thank you, Mr. Powell. Salute. Salute. <laughs>